Today we are here at Our Daily Bread, and while we've been here before, we've been in a different garden. Today we're looking at a, another side of the garden, which was developed and established by Dr. Bailey Norwood for his Farm to Fork program. And joining me is Dr. Norwood. Thank you so much for having us here in this garden. Mm -hmm. um, so tell us a little bit about why you established a garden for your program. Well, I started my farm to fork class in 2015. And at the time it was completely online and it would have over 200 students in it. And it seemed weird that I had a course called farm to fork with a large enrollment and I never even met the students and we didn't do anything outside. Mm -hmm. And then in 2017, they were building our daily bread and they had all this just grassy area around it and I looked at it and said, we should have a garden. Mm -hmm. And so we started the farm to fork garden here. And what we do now is the students taking the class, they, uh, they do quizzes and tests and things like that. But one of the requirements is they have to come out here in the garden and work. Okay. And so during the spring, we're raising lots of cool season vegetables like lettuce, broccoli, that kind of thing. And then during the summer when the kids leave, we transition the garden to summer crops and we try to grow things that the OSU student farm isn't growing, more unusual things. Okay. And people come out here and they, they pick it themselves. Well, I love a garden that experiments a little bit. Yeah. So we should mention your background is ag economy, which I think you're the first economist <laughs> to be on Oklahoma gardening, but how does that play into horticulture? <laughs> right, it ends up working pretty well. One, um, I envy horticulturists because they get to do so many different things. We that's, got the best office. <laughs> yes, that's more interesting than just crunching numbers. But I'll give you one way it ends up working well with Ag Econ. And so the students come here and they grow the vegetables and we bring it inside to give to the people here. But then we also study how the food charity supply chain works, how our daily bread gets produce from the food banks and Feeding America. And there's a lot of economics in there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I know you're doing a lot of like investigating the inputs that go into the garden um, economically, what's the value of the water and the labor and all of that versus the product that comes out of it. So absolutely, it's fascinating absolutely. some of the research that you're doing. But let's get back to the garden here okay. for a minute. I know you've got a lot of different plants that you're experimenting with. Tell us a little about a few of them. There's a three of them in particular I okay. kind of found out. One is a uh, apple melon. Okay. That's the common name for it. I bought some seeds about 10 years ago for it. And it, it's, a, it's a melon but it produces a small melon and you can just cut it in half uh -huh. and just scoop the seeds out and eat everything, including the skin. Oh, really? And it kind of tastes like a granny apple. And the nice thing is it loves Oklahoma. Really? It does. Yes, the, the heat, the humidity, the soils, it grows great here. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. We're always looking for something to <laughs> add to the Oklahoma landscape. I've never had to spray it for anything, never had a problem with it. Okay, all right. And, there, and what are some of the other ones you're looking at? The, the other one is, this is a new one I've done this year, something called Bolivian coriander. So you know how there's the plant cilantro, we call the seeds coriander. Right, right. And, um, we love cilantro. And it's sauces. a cool season, though, so it tends to bolt on us. Right. As soon as you can start getting leaves from it, it bolts. Right, right. And so there's a plant. They call it Bolivian coriander because in Bolivia, they use the leaves as a substitute for coriander. Oh, okay. But the nice thing is it doesn't bolt. It just keeps growing and keeps producing lots of leaves, and so you can keep harvesting the leaves all summer long. And it does eventually seed, but not till uh, towards later in and fall. And it's got a beautiful foliage. Like, it could be a very nice ornamental to add into the landscape it as does. well. It does, and once I've learned, it can be a, a little finicky when it's getting started, but once it gets a good root system in, and it's summer, it takes off, okay. and it's a tough plant. Excellent, it takes off in a good way, instead That's of bolting right. on it's, us, Exactly, right? exactly. <laughs> and exactly. then I know you really are fond of partridge peas, so <laughs> yeah. let's talk about the partridge peas. If you had told 18-year-old Bailey Norwood that he would be talking about his favorite flower when he was 50 years old, <laughs> oh, he wouldn't know what to think of that. <laughs> yeah, my favorite pollinator plant is one called partridge Pea. Okay. And I like it for a number of reasons. One, it's native. And so it and the native bumblebee evolve together. And, and you can tell because the bumblebees love it. Early in the morning, you get out in a partridge pea um, patch and you listen. All you can hear is the buzzing. It's and just vibrating. You, you'll yeah. swear every bumblebee within Payne County is right in that patch. <laughs> you have all of yeah. them here. Okay. Yeah. And they, they go, the bees go into the flower and they, you know how your phone vibrates? Uh -huh. When it's, yeah. you get a call, it gets in there and it shakes, and it shakes the pollen out. Oh, very interesting. Yes, and another thing I like, it's a beautiful plant. It's got mm -hmm. lovely yellow flowers. 
that, you know, for like three months will keep producing flowers. And a legume. So it's you're legume. also helping with the soil right. nitrogen fixation. Yeah. And they do use it as like a cover crop in some places, okay. especially in riparian buffers. Okay. Okay. And, uh, and it's tough. Now, it looks like it's popped up in a few different places in your garden. So be forewarned a little bit to homeowners <laughs> right. that if they do put it out, they might find it coming right. up in other places. But it's not a perennial and it only spreads by seeds. Okay. But okay. it does reseed itself nicely. So the patch I have here, um, I think it was around 2017, I just threw out some seeds on the ground. Uh -huh. The plants popped up and every year they reseed themselves. Okay. I've never had to replant it. Okay, but being a native, we're a little bit more okay with that. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So. And the bumblebees certainly are. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Dr. Norwood, thank you so much for sharing your garden with us today. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.